világos elképzelése, amivel nehéz nem egyet érteni. Tehát ő a következőket mondja. Először is az ukrán-orosz háborúba ő nem fogadni egy fillért se. Ezért vége is lesz a háborúnak. Mert nyilván, hogy Ukrajna önmagában nem áll meg a lábán. Ha az amerikaiak nem adnak pénzt meg fegyvert, meg mellettük az európaiak, akkor ennek a háborúnak vége van. És ha az amerikaiak nem adnak pénzt, az európaiak, egy, az európaiak egymagukban képtelenek ezt a háborút finanszírozni. És akkor vége van a háborúnak. Trump elnök úr most még nem elnök, de az ő pártja ma az amerikai törvényhozásban megakadályozza, hogy a demokraták pénzt tudjanak adni a háborúba. Az elnök pedig azt mondja, Trump elnök úr, hogyha ő visszatér, akkor ő nem is tesz ilyen kezdeményezést, ő nem fog adni egy fillért se. Ezzel vége is lesz a háborúnak. Azt is mondja, hogy ő nem akarja finanszírozni az európaiak helyett Európa biztonságát. This is my video update on this Monday morning, March the 11th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with the destruction of Russian Iskander missiles. I think this is a very important topic that we have to discuss because it, uh, it looks like the Ukraine military has found a way to destroy Iskander missiles, Russian Iskander missiles. And uh, this includes hypersonic missiles. So this is a huge development. And I think this is a development that is going to to worry the Russian military and the Russian government. Because uh, the way Ukraine is doing this, the way the Ukraine military is destroying these Iskander missiles and Calibre missiles, is that they are moving the Patriot air defense systems from, uh, from where they previously were located in, uh, in Kiev and, and Odessa and uh, major Ukrainian cities, and they are moving these Patriot air defense systems closer to the front line. And then what, uh, what the Ukraine military, and I'm sure they're doing this with uh, NATO's uh, consulting, is they are allowing the Iskander missiles to, to come down and, and hit the Patriot air defense systems. And this is destroying the Iskander missiles. And so this is a game-changing moment for uh, not only for the conflict, but for, for military strategy going forward. Um, it's... it's uh, It's a new technique that is being employed by NATO and by, uh, and by the Ukraine military, and it is proving to be quite effective at destroying uh, Russian Iskander missiles. So that's, that's the strategy. That's the technique that, uh, that the Ukraine military is using with the consulting of uh, NATO. They're, they're moving the Patriot system to the front line, And then they're allowing the Patriot systems to just get hit by the Iskander missiles. Yes, yes, you may be asking the Patriot missile systems. They are also destroyed. Yes, this is true. This is true. But what's more important is that the Iskander missiles are being destroyed. True, the Patriot air defense systems cost anywhere between one billion to two billion dollars and and one Iskander missile is about one million dollars so yeah there may be a difference in the actual cost between the the two weapons the Patriot uh, air defense system being significantly more expensive than the Iskander missile but the the main point here is that the Iskander missile is uh, is being destroyed as it hits Patriot air defense system. And over this weekend, we had two uh, Patriot air defense systems sacrifice themselves in order to destroy a couple of uh, Iskander uh, Russian missiles. So that is a big, big story. And I think it's going to change the way this conflict is, uh, is being fought because uh, I'm sure the Russians They, uh, they don't want to lose any more Iskander missiles.
to the, to the Patriot air defense system that is being sacrificed to destroy the Iskander missiles. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, enough of that, <laughs> enough of that. Two, uh, two Patriot systems were destroyed over the weekend. Uh, from what I understand, uh, over the past, say, two weeks, and we have video and photo evidence of this, unlike the, the SU-34s that are being uh, knocked, knocked out of the sky by, uh, by the Ukraine military, for which we have no video or photo uh, evidence of, of this, but for the, the destruction of the Patriot systems. Over the past two weeks, we've had something like six, I want to say, anywhere, I think four to, four to six Patriot air defense systems being completely obliterated by uh, Russian missiles. So Ukraine is now waiting for, for some more Patriot systems. And according to Forbes, Ukraine is going to have to wait for quite a bit of time for uh, some new Patriot systems to be delivered. Ukraine or one of its allies could line up to buy new launchers to replace the two Russians destroyed, but such a purchase could take months, even years, according to Forbes. And Ukraine is looking to replace the Patriot systems that Russian missiles destroyed in the Bakrovsk area. And it may take months, even years, to replace those Patriot uh, systems. So the New York Times is reporting that the, the Wonder Weapon game-changing F-16s that are supposed to be delivered to Ukraine by this spring, early summer, 45 F-16s to, to be precise. It looks like that uh, those F-16s are going to be downscaled from, scaled down from 45 F-16s to, am I reading this right? To six, to six F-16s coming from Denmark by uh, spring, early July is the time, the timeline for the Wonder Weapon F-16s to be delivered to the Ukraine military. And according to the New York Times, citing military officials, they believe that the F-16s, the six F-16s delivered to the Ukraine military will not will not make a difference in the conflict, in the overall trajectory of, of the conflict. They won't be a game changer. They will not be a game changer. But uh, from 45 to 6, according to the New York Times, Ukraine could deploy F-16s as soon as July, but only a few. That is the title of the New York Times uh, article on the F-16s. Ukraine could get them as soon as July, but only a few. Countries promised the fighter jets last year, but delivering them and training pilots has proved complex. Ukraine may start with a few as six out of about 45 pledged. No worries, no problem. Uh, David Cameron, uh, Foreign Secretary, uh, Lord, not David Cameron, excuse me, my apologies to, to the Lords of, uh, of the world. It is Lord Cameron. He is on the case. He is trying to find solutions to all of the military problems plaguing uh, NATO and uh, the Ukraine military. And one of the solutions that Lord, Lord Cameron, that he came up with, and I talked about this yesterday in my video update, is that uh, Germany could send the long-range Taurus missiles to the UK because Germany has proven reluctant to send the Taurus missiles directly to the Ukraine military. But what they can do, according to, to Foreign Secretary Lord, Lord Cameron, is that uh, they could send Taurus missiles to the UK and then the UK can send long range storm shadow missiles to Ukraine. And uh, this is an idea that is to the liking of of the military mastermind known as Annalena 360. She's in favor of this idea from Lord, Lord Cameron. Baerbach said that a circular exchange is, so to speak, a German invention. 
that would be an option. <laughs> the circular, circular exchange. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Annalena360 says that a circular, <laughs> a 360 degree, a circular exchange is a, is a German invention. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt, Annalena360. It is without a doubt a German invention. <laughs> Uh, clown world in the beginning of, <laughs> of today's video. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, Annalena's uh, logic when it comes to, to delivering weapons is very unique. Uh, if you deliver German tanks to Ukraine, those tanks are no longer German tanks, but they're Ukrainian leopards. <laughs> Remember when Annalena said that one? Yeah. So circular exchange is... A German invention, a German innovation, that 360 circular exchange. So Annalena is uh, supporting uh, Lord, Lord Cameron's circular 360 exchange initiative. By the way, did anyone uh, catch Annalena Baerbach's uh, Ramadan uh, video wishes for, for uh happy Ramadan video that she put out on uh, on the interwebs yesterday. It's about a minute and 20, minute and 30 seconds. And and boy, what a video from Annalena Baerbach. Talk about being being tone deaf to, to, to what is happening in uh, in Gaza. Annalena delivered quite a shocking uh, video yesterday, um, wishing everyone a happy Ramadan and in the video she actually says in this video that she posted on social media that uh, that she is sending greetings to those suffering from the wounds caused by Hamas's terror that is what she said in this video and then at the end of the video she she sent out a wish that uh, everyone just just talk to each other. This is coming from Annalena Baerbach. Go see the video. It's about uh, a minute and 20 seconds long and an, an incredible video that Annalena uh, decided to publish. Her team actually thought this was a good idea to post this video online. Oh boy. So um, there are rumors that the commander in chief of the Russian Navy, Nikolai Evmenov will be resigning or relieved of his duty as the, as the naval uh, commander. And right now, these are just rumors, but Peskov, when he was asked about this from the media, about, asked about the resignation of Evmenov from the post of commander in chief of the Navy, Peskov said, there are decrees classified as secrets. I cannot comment on them. There were no open decrees to be published on this matter. That is what Peskov said when he was asked about this admiral's resignation or removal. And I imagine that these could be more than rumors because, as I've said on, on many videos in the past, it does look like if there is one, if you can call it a weakness, one, one gap, or one weakness in in this entire conflict with regards to uh, to Project Ukraine and, and with NATO, especially NATO, because they're the ones that are providing the the surveillance for uh, everything that's happening in uh, in the Black Sea. Uh, more than surveillance, actually, much more than surveillance they're providing. But um, it's it's the Black Sea that's that appears to be the one gap, the one weakness. Of, uh, of the Russian military in this conflict. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if these rumors are actually true, but we'll see. We will wait for confirmation from the Russian military. If we even get confirmation from the Russian military, because as Peskov says in his statement, these, decree, these decrees are classified as secret. So let's now talk about NATO troops in uh, Ukraine. And actually, we are getting word. Check this out. We are getting word that Macron is planning a trip to Kiev. You guys want to go to the, to the beach? 
Let's walk over to the beach. We are getting news that Macron is planning to visit Kiev in the next couple of weeks. I very rarely say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. I told you, everyone, I told everyone that this was going to happen. And you know why I knew this was going to happen, why I knew that Macron was going to make a visit to Kiev. I said it in many videos. Alensky number five. I called it. Macron is being driven insane. Madness. Madness is descending upon little Napoleon. And why, you might ask? Well, I've said this in many videos in the past. One of the explanations of, Ma of Macron's madness, of his crazy rhetoric, has to do with the fact that he has been deprived of the enchanting, the intoxicating smell of Alensky number five. 20% off, use the code green t-shirt. But uh, yeah, he has to get a whiff of that Alensky number five and, and maybe, just maybe, if he gets a whiff of that Alensky number five, He'll uh, come to his senses and he'll calm down from, from this crazy rhetoric. Of course, the reverse could happen. Alensky number five as a perfume is very unpredictable and it might actually drive Macron even more mad. It, it, it is very much a narcotic. Once you get one smell of Alensky number five, you just can't get enough and, and it could drive you towards... Uh, towards the abyss, towards madness. But yeah, Macron, according to the AFP, will be going to Kiev to get his hit of that intoxicating smell known as Alensky number five. So the defense minister of Italy, he sounded off on Macron's idea of troops in Ukraine. And the defense minister of Italy said, France and Poland can speak for themselves, but not on behalf of NATO. This is what the defense minister of Italy said. He also stated that making such arguments now makes no sense. Any potential NATO troop deployments to Ukraine means taking a step towards one-sided escalation that would block the path to diplomacy. The Italian defense minister, Crosetto, said in a statement yesterday. So from Italy, it is a no for troops in Ukraine, at least for now, it's a no for uh, troops in Ukraine. Of course, that can always change. If the United States orders Italy to send troops to Ukraine, well then I imagine Italy would send troops to Ukraine. But uh, that is the statement from the defense minister. Sending, sending troops into Ukraine, NATO troops into Ukraine, would, would do a lot more damage than just, than just uh, ruining any, any potential diplomacy in the future. It would actually lead us to a potential nuclear conflict, Mr. Defense Minister of Italy. So, so yes, it would be a setback for diplomacy, as the Defense Minister stated, but it would do a lot more damage to, to all of us, to the entire planet if you uh, send NATO troops into Ukraine. But uh, according to the foreign minister of Poland, Mr. Thank You USA Sikorsky, <laughs> Thank You USA Sikorsky, he actually said that uh, NATO troops, they're already in Ukraine. The troops of NATO countries are already in Ukraine. And, uh, and then he thanked them. He thanked the, the NATO troops that are in Ukraine. So Korsky actually said that, said this in the event that uh, Poland was, was taking part in with NATO a, a couple of days ago. So Sikorsky has, has admitted, thank you USA Sikorsky has come out and admitted that yes, we do have NATO troops operating in Ukraine. Though I don't know if he specified as to as to what they are doing in Ukraine, but they are there. Much to everyone's surprise, I'm sure you're, you're shocked and surprised to, uh, 
to have this admission from, thank you, USA, Sikorsky, that NATO troops are in Ukraine. I know I'm shocked. I'm completely shocked and surprised. I never, never in my wildest dream, in my wildest dreams thought that, uh, that NATO troops are, are in Ukraine, but there you have it. And uh, Maria Zakharova, she came out with a statement and she said that there is no sense for NATO to deny the presence of its forces in Ukraine. So that is the statement from Zakharova. Stop denying NATO, NATO's presence in Ukraine. Yeah, I agree with that statement from Maria Zakharova. Now let's talk about, about the Pope's white flag statement. So the Pope, he said uh, a month ago, actually, in an interview a month ago, but it's gone viral. For some reason, I don't know why Reuters decided to make this post, this interview viral. There must be a reason for it. But uh, they have decided to make this interview of the Pope go viral now. The Pope basically said that Ukraine has lost this conflict and uh, they need to find courage to, to negotiate, to put up the white flag. And this has upset uh, Ukrainian officials and Alensky. He has dismissed the Pope's call for Ukraine to raise a white flag. Quote, Russian murderers and torturers are not moving further into Europe only because they are being held back by Ukrainians with weapons in their hands and under the blue and yellow flag. So according to Alensky, it is, uh, it is the Ukrainian military that is holding the Russians back from, from invading all of Europe. So that is why Ukraine cannot, under any circumstances, surrender to the Russians. And Foreign Minister Kuleba, who could be on his way out, or perhaps as the third ambassador to the United Kingdom, Kuleba, the foreign minister, he actually said that, that it is indeed Ukraine that is stopping Russia from invading Europe. He also said that more weapons are needed to continue to stop the Russians from invading all of Europe. Quote, if Russia's war in Ukraine is not stopped, war, war will break out in Europe, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Kaluba said on Sunday in an interview with the Latvian newspaper Delphi, Kaluba said the debate that was sparked by the idea of French President Emmanuel Macron to send Western troops to Ukraine will save Europe time. And this message of Macron is something that everyone, they know, but they are afraid to say it. I think the narrative, in my opinion, the narrative about about how it is Ukraine that is preventing Russia from invading all of Europe is just as dumb, it's just as stupid as the narrative that Russia wanted to, to take over all of Ukraine in three days. I'm, I'm still debating which narrative is, is more dumb. <laughs> which narrative is it? Is it Russia wants to take over Ukraine in three days? Or is it this new narrative that, that Russia, if it, if it defeats Ukraine, will invade all of Europe? <laughs> I still haven't figured out which narrative is more dumb. But they're going with this. Russia's, Russia wants to invade Europe, and it is only Ukraine that is stopping them. So send more money and more weapons. Because if Russia were to defeat Ukraine, well, then Russia would would make it all the way to Portugal. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You hear that, everyone in Portugal? Ukraine is preventing Russia from, from taking over your country. <laughs> Maybe they'll make it all the way to London. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's why Lord Cameron is working so hard to, to figure out alternative methods to get uh, missiles to Ukraine, because Lord Cameron he is trying to protect the UK and trying to protect London from the Putin. Why would Russia, if Russia wanted to, to invade all of Europe, why would Russia do it via Ukraine? <laughs> Can anyone answer me that question? Why would they go through Ukraine? Why not just go through, through the Baltics? I mean, you're right there. <laughs> why do you have to go all the way through Ukraine? Why do you have to go through the strongest uh, NATO military in Europe, and that is what the Ukraine military was. They were, were, past tense, they were the strongest army in all of, uh, 
of NATO in Europe, in the Europe mainland. Um, why would you go through this military, these, these massive fortifications in order to, to make it to, to where? <laughs> where? Where would you want to go? Uh, Poland, Hungary, and then Romania? Why, why would you want to invade Europe in that, in that way? Why not just go straight through the Baltics? It would take you about, I don't know, eight hours to, to 12 hours to, to make your way through the Baltics and then just, just keep on going. It makes no sense. It makes no, no sense. I don't know. I don't know why, why Russia chose to invade Europe via Ukraine. But hey, that's the narrative that we're being led to believe. Just like the narrative that Russia with 40,000 troops was going to take over all of Kiev, all, all of uh, the 3 million population of Kiev. Russia was going to take it all over with 40,000 troops. <laughs> oh boy. And there are some people that actually post on social media and they actually claim that Russia said they wanted to take over Ukraine in uh, three days. When did Russia ever say that? When did the Russian military ever give any type of, uh, of timeline with regards to Project Ukraine. When has the Russian government ever, ever given any kind of, kind of indication as to what the, the, the strategy is with this conflict outside of demilitarization and denazification and protecting the, uh, the Russian speakers in, uh, in the Donbass? Never, never has the Russian military, the Russian government ever put any type of timeline on, uh, on the conflict in Ukraine. The closest you can get to, to maybe, maybe trying to understand what the overall Russian goals are for this conflict outside of demilitarization and denazification is, is the maps that, Mev, that uh, Medvedev every once in a while puts out there. And if you go by Medvedev's maps, well then it's not gonna look good for, uh, for Ukraine, but who knows, who knows if that's, if that's the Russian administration's thinking, or if that's their, if that's the strategy that they've actually decided on. But the never, never, ever, ever has the Russian military said, we're going to take over this city or that city in X amount of days or weeks or months. That statement actually was created by Mark Milley, just so we, we set the record straight. It was Mark Milley who came up with that propaganda narrative that Russia wants to take over Kiev or Ukraine in three days. And then the media, they, they very cleverly attributed it, attributed it to the, the Russian government. And now it's just taken for granted that the Russian government said three days to take over all of Ukraine. That was Mark Milley. That was Joint Chiefs of Staff, former Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, that came up with that whopper of, uh, of a lie. But um, anyway... Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on now and talk about this, this good cop, bad cop game that the Biden administration is playing with uh, Netanyahu. And uh, during the MSNBC interview that Biden gave the other day where he mixed up Afghanistan and, uh, and Ukraine, or maybe not, maybe, maybe he didn't mix up Afghanistan and Ukraine, but uh, during this interview, Biden said that Netanyahu, he, referring to Netanyahu, has a right to defend Israel, a right to continue to pursue Hamas, but he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. By not doing so, Netanyahu is hurting Israel more than he's helping Israel. It's contrary to what Israel stands for. I think it's a big mistake. So I want to see a ceasefire, Biden said. Biden is trying to position himself for purely um, election related reasons, because in Michigan and Minnesota, the Democrats and Biden, he's getting hammered in uh, Michigan and uh, Minnesota. He may actually lose uh, those states. Michigan, most likely he will lose it. But uh, for electoral reasons, he's trying to make it seem like like he's the, the good guy in all of this, telling Netanyahu, please stop, please, you know, scale things down, please try to protect civilian lives. Uh, you, you have a right to, to do whatever you want, but we're telling you to just, just calm things down. That's, that's how Biden's trying to make it appear, appear like. And I wonder if anyone's buying this, 
this game that, that the Biden campaign is trying to, to put out there, trying to play with, with the American voters. If Biden really, really wanted the Biden White House, I should say, because Biden, okay. <laughs> if the Biden White House really wanted to put, to put a stop to, to the conflict in, uh, in Israel and in Gaza, this war that, that, is, that, is kill, that has killed 30,000 uh, civilians, according to, to, to various uh, reports. Even Lloyd Austin, the defense secretary, he said at a house, uh, a house um, a meeting that, uh, congressional testimony meeting, that 25,000 civilians had been killed in Gaza. That's coming from the Defense Secretary, Lord Austin. Anyway, um, if, if they really wanted to put a stop to, to this, they would, they would tell Netanyahu to stop it, and they would stop sending weapons and money to Israel, and they would put a stop to this. But the, the reverse is happening. They're building uh, ports and piers with U.S. military about to, to go to to these peers that they're building in Gaza. And they say it's for humanitarian aid, but you know, who knows if, if that's really true, I, I, I doubt it. Anyway, uh, games, games are being played by Biden. He's trying to fool the American people to make it look like he's the good guy in all of this um, when he is not. So, and, and Netanyahu is obviously, he's not buying, buying any of this because every time that Biden comes out with a statement like, um, Netanyahu is, is not doing Israel any good by, by going after, by killing all these civilians. He always prefaces it with a statement like Netanyahu can do whatever he wants or Israel can do whatever they want, but Israel can do whatever they want, but Netanyahu is not doing Israel any favor. So Netanyahu is just brushing all of this off. He's saying, yeah, whatever, whatever, Biden, you know, just try to play this election game and we're just going to ignore whatever whatever you said. Anyway, let's uh, let's see here. Let's do one more story, and then we'll get into our clown world, and we'll stick with Biden, and we'll talk about what Dmitry Medvedev said about Biden the other day, and this follows on Biden's statement that the United States should not be in Ukraine, and he meant to say Afghanistan, but he said Ukraine, and uh, Medvedev, he picked up on this, this slip-up from Professor Biden, a very rare, a very rare slip-up from the U.S. president. He rarely slips up like this, but uh, he did during this MSNBC interview, and Medvedev said that Biden is, and I quote, this is Dmitry Medvedev, he said that Biden is a rare kind of idiot. And uh, he also, he, he posted this on social media, Medvedev. He said that Biden is a rare kind of idiot and he posted a short clip of Biden's gaffe. As he, he said, he's a rare kind of idiot. So that is what Dmitry Medvedev said in response to Biden's statement about the U.S. not being in, uh, should not have gone into Ukraine when Biden meant to say the U.S. should not have gone into Afghanistan. So, uh, yeah. Oh, a rare kind of idiot. That is what Medvedev said about Biden. I disagree. I disagree with Medvedev. Biden, Biden is a handsome man. <laughs> He's a very handsome man. <laughs> All right, let's do a clown world. And... Uh, this clown world, of course, is about the Academy Awards, the Oscars, that uh, took place yesterday evening, and Oppenheimer was the big winner, I believe, with six or seven Oscars. I didn't watch the, the awards uh, ceremony, but I did read about it this morning in order to prepare for today's clown world because I knew, I just knew that the Oscars was going to provide some good clown world material. I just had a feeling that Hollywood would not let the clown world segment down, and it did not let the clown world segment down. But the Oppenheimer won, uh, won seven awards, I believe, including Best Picture. Uh, best Documentary was Matislav Chernov's 20 Days in Mariupol. That got the Best Documentary, the first 
uh, Oscar for, uh, for Ukraine. Uh, no surprise there. I'm sure everyone knew that Ukraine would, uh, would win the Oscar for Best Documentary Film or 20 Days in Mariupol would win the Oscar for Best Documentary Film. But let me read you what the Associated Press posted on Twitter X. Matislav's Chernov's 20 Days in Mariupol, a harrowing first-person account of the early days of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022 won the Oscar for Best Documentary. It was the first Academy Award for the AP and PBS front line. All right, um, my question to everyone that is watching this video, as I read you this Twitter X post, what do you, what do you see that's wrong in this Twitter X post? What do you see that the AP has done, which is, which is uh, a big no-no, a very, very big no-no from the Associated Press? Let me read it to you again. Matislav Chernov's 20 Days in Mariupol, a harrowing first-person account of the early days of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, won the Oscar for Best Documentary. Of Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Associated Press... You are in big, big trouble. <laughs> big, big trouble. How would you like to live at the Dream Tower where all your dreams come true? Buy an apartment at the Dream Tower. You can give me a call and we'll hang out for, for a coffee and talk about politics, geopolitics, at the Dream Tower. Right across from the beach and from the plastic bottle fishies, the recyclable plastic bottle fishy, which is full. <laughs> Someone needs to empty out this, uh, this recycle, <laughs> this recycling bottle fishy, like ASAP, <laughs> it is full. So yeah, what did the Associated Press do wrong? Well, it's obvious. They said Russia's invasion, Russia's full Scale Invasion Associated Press. Get with the program, bro. <laughs> Guys, fellas. Russia's full-scale invasion. It's time to edit this post. Edit this post. And actually, you should say Russia's unprovoked full-scale invasion <laughs> of Ukraine in 2022. So big, big mess up from the Associated Press. And finally, during the Oscars, they had what, what they do at every ceremony, every Oscar ceremony, they had a tribute to, uh, to actors who have passed away, Academy Award winners who had passed away over the previous year in 2023. And they pay tribute to, to actors like Matthew Perry, Richard Lewis, uh, entertainers like uh, the great Tina Turner, did, did they pay a tribute to Carl Weathers? I don't know if they paid a tribute to Carl Weathers, but I really hope they did because he's awesome. Apollo Creed, he's absolutely awesome. But uh, may he rest in peace, Carl Weathers. But they also paid a tribute during this uh, segment of the Academy Awards to, to Alexei Navalny. Yeah, they paid a tribute to Navalny during the Oscars for uh, his passing away last month. And, uh, and yeah, they paid a tribute to Navalny because the reasoning is that I believe he got, or a documentary based on Navalny got, uh, got the best documentary award last year at the Oscars. So this year it was, it was uh, 20 days in Mariupol and last year it was a documentary on, on Alexei Navalny, either last year or the year before. And so the Oscars paid tribute to Navalny. I really, really hope that, uh, that they paid tribute to Carl Weathers because if they pay tribute to Navalny without paying a tribute to Carl Weathers, well then, that's just messed up, man. That is absolutely messed up. Anyway, that is the video, everybody. 
theduran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop. 15% off all t-shirts. And uh, give a like to this video. Subscribe to this channel. Let's get to 200,000 sub subscribers on YouTube. Can I get there by the end of this year? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Anyway, that is the video, everybody. Take care.